we are going to get started. Uh, we have been, uh, this is uh, Senator Petrowski this morning said that it was his first virtual legislative day. Uh, he doesn't have much broadband in the community he lives in, so he maneuvered his Zoom call by phone uh, and he had a great presentation, words of encouragement, as you might suspect. Uh, Andy Hauk introduced him and then one legislator who is really taking a more active role in transportation uh, is David Constantine from Baraboo area. Uh, he joined us and uh, we had a great discussion, uh, went into some depth on policy, all ends of the DOT and the governor's budget. There's a lot of positive things uh, in that budget that we will be supporting. We will be actively supporting uh, and helping and uh, we're just honored that uh, these people could spend the time with us. And Representative Constantine mentioned a few things that the DOT had in their report as well. So it really worked out well. Um, I have a folder here in front of me and it, our, my folder is from March 4th of last year. The five groups assembled today were the last um, legislative day held in the state capitol last year and then things began to shut down very quickly. And I'm, I'm proud to say that we are the first five associations joining together through our leadership uh, members uh, today to talk about our future, uh, to talk about things that we care about in transportation. And we believe that the state government is a grantor of mobility for all Wisconsinites and because the freedom Freedom in our modern society, freedom in Wisconsin in the future is defined by mobility. And that includes the wide range of that. Uh, we also believe that every legislative day uh, should be ended with some thank yous. And we have some very serious thank yous to give this year. This has been an unprecedented year uh, for people. Just imagine if you operate 10 vehicles and your job was picking up and taking people from nursing homes in Washington, Ozaki, Fond du Lac, Sheboygan counties when this first hit in those areas. There was a lack of information, there was a lack, there was great fear, there was denial, there were all those things. So part of our goal today is to say thank you. And we've devoted these 60 minutes uh, to say thank you. And we will do a couple of awards here in order. Uh, we will end with the award to the department um, for its public partnership. And we're gonna start out with All Aboard Minnesota. Uh, Senator Jeff Smith is uh, a very active legislator, former town chairman, uh, quite an active person in the state capitol, represents Northwestern Wisconsin. Ja Senator Smith is going to say a few words and then he's going to introduce Scott Rogers and Scott is the vice president of the Eau Claire Chamber and we are presenting an award to all aboard uh, Minnesota uh, from all five of us but nominated by all aboard uh, Wisconsin. So Senator Smith, we welcome you. Thanks Gary. Uh, so I am an Eau Claire native and uh Still, and I've lived my whole life in Eau Claire County. I, uh, you know, so when you live in Eau Claire and, or in the Eau Claire and West, it's basically, you know, that connection to the Twin Cities. I have a brother in the Twin Cities. A lot of people um, travel at I-94 back and forth. We, we, we have a great connection, I think, in, in this part of the state to the Twin Cities. We, we, it's, uh, it's always been a great partnership. And of course, the the, the transportation uh, phase of part of it is is so clearly important, and I am so excited that that uh, Minnesota all aboard Minnesota has uh, taken it on and realized how important Wisconsin is to the Twin Cities and to and to Minnesota and having that partnership and and that relationship. Um, it, it, it's important to all of us, and and I am so pleased to be able to. Uh, to commend and be a part of this presentation to um, all aboard Minnesota because uh, we, we we need each other. We, we really need each other. I, 
I, I joke all the time about how in my Senate district, I represent the West Coast. But, uh, <laughs> but I also always include that that's right across the river from the East Coast of Minnesota. And uh, it's not your fault that the Vikings are over there and the Packers are over here. But, you know, you can't have everything, right? Uh, but that said, <laughs> that said, I have to give, I have to get that dig in. Uh, but rail has always been uh, particularly um, uh, important to me. My, all the way back in my father's uh, younger days, he was he worked for the railroad uh, when he started out as a young man, and and it has always been uh, in our in our DNA that uh, that we paid a lot of attention to the rail. And my dad always said, you know, that we that we went the wrong direction for a long time. Um, and ignoring the rail, and now here we are. We're going back. We're going back to where where we back to the future, right? And I know that uh, Scott's going to talk a lot about that, and, and that has been our connection uh, between Scott and I. We we have we have uh, connected years ago uh, on and this uh, this particular topic. So Scott, take it away, and and uh, and let everyone know how important that is to all of us here in, in the Eau Claire area. Thank you. Well, thank you, Senator Smith. And um, I actually happen to be a constituent of Senator Smith as well. I live and work in uh, downtown Eau Claire, and that's in his district. Um, and I appreciate his background uh, looking ahead to when we're going to be able to board a passenger train in Eau Claire and go uh, to the Twin Cities and hopefully in the future to Milwaukee uh, and Chicago. Um, I think uh, Gary mentioned that I'm the Vice President of Government Affairs at the Eau Claire Area Chamber of Commerce, and I'm also a chair of the West Central Wisconsin Rail Coalition, and I was also appointed by the governor to be the private sector representative on the Midwest Interstate Passenger Rail Commission. Uh, and I thank uh, Secretary Thompson for that. Uh, he was involved in recommending me for that, that position. And really in that kind of work, um, I've been able to observe and experience all of Board Minnesota's work, and that's why we're here today. And one of the reasons that All Aboard Minnesota is being recognized is for their active and innovative efforts uh, to work with a variety of organizations and communities across, the, uh, across state lines, really to help make happen uh, the uh, Twin Cities, Milwaukee, Chicago project. And I think you're seeing uh, the map really of, of the future here of what that project is all about. It's the extension of one of the Hiawatha, popular Hiawatha trains, Chicago to Milwaukee, all the way uh, across to the Twin Cities. And it really highlights uh, the critical nature of the cooperative efforts uh, between states and providers in providing a, a practical alternative uh, to driving. It's a modest but impactful improvement that we can all see by adding another train on that route that'll be dependable and uh, available to people who don't want to drive but want to or can't drive. Um, in fact, this was supported by our chamber here in Eau Claire, uh, by our city council and by our county board, because it also uh, has the potential for adding connections with shuttles to Eau Claire, Rochester, and Madison to really to improve the mobility. And as this project happens, um, really all the organizations involved in sponsoring this legislative day as well will be involved in bringing people uh, to and from uh, that service. So. The last piece of that is the capital funding from uh, the state of Minnesota that will make this thing go forward with the federal uh, grants that have already been received. And really congratulations to uh, All Aboard Minnesota, which has really worked in, in their state and working with our states, uh, with, with communities, with lawmakers there, chambers of commerce and other organizations. And um, having experienced and been to some of their virtual meetings now and before that, uh, some of the in-person meetings they've done in places like Winona, uh, they really are a model of what can be done to build community support uh, with uh, with volunteers. So, uh, Gary, I'm going to turn it back to you for the actual award, but uh, congratulations to all aboard Minnesota and thank you for your great work in this regard. I just, uh, outstanding that we can present this award. Uh, you'll get the actual award in your office and uh, we will uh, be issuing some press statements about this and just a big thank you uh, to all aboard Minnesota for working with us. Our governor in Wisconsin and their governor in Minnesota are friends. They believe in working together. Our governor says uh, pretty often he believes in connecting the dots. The map that Scott just showed you connects a lot of dots. 
And uh, I would, I'm honored to, on behalf of all five of our associations, say thank you and congratulations and let you know that we wanna keep working uh, together. So thank you, Minnesota. We appreciate it. A few words from Jerry, uh, Mark. First off, this is Brian Nelson, president of All Aboard Minnesota. Um, and we are very humbled, grateful, and honored for this award. And, you know, I can't tell you how much we value and appreciate our association with All Aboard Wisconsin and the work that we've been able to do uh, collaboratively, uh, you know, through the past several years. Um, we are just very grateful for for this honor and are truly appreciate it. Um, one of the things I'd like to mention is we are an all volunteer organization. The credit is really due to the board of All Aboard Minnesota, which is very committed, passionate. Um, they are very proactive in terms of approaching passenger rail advocacy within the state of Minnesota and Wisconsin, and uh, we've always held the approach that we need to work, you know, a, across states, across different groups, you know, to bring services like the St. Paul to Chicago corridor through Wisconsin. And, um, you know, I'm just very grateful to the board that is so passionate and so committed to this work. And people like Jerry Ratliff, who are just without a doubt, some of the greatest rail advocates anybody could possibly have in terms of his passion, dedication, and commitment to outreach, you know, across the state of Minnesota and throughout Wisconsin. And what, what we do every year is try to rally around a single strategic goal that we can focus on. And while we while we represent and promote and advocate for a root system across Minnesota that connects many part, different parts of the state and connect us to the upper Midwest, one of the things that we've really rallied around is the um, St. Paul to Chicago second train frequency. And that is our mission again this year. And we are focused and centered around getting the state match to get the federal grant to get that train rolling. So that is our commitment this year. And um, we are absolutely dedicated to making that happen. So again, thank you for this incredible award. Um, very grateful, honored and humbled to accept it on behalf of All Aboard Minnesota. And again, we appreciate and so value our collaboration and working partnership with all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, and uh, hopefully if we keep working together, uh, we, we can achieve some real progress here and maybe uh, op uh, be part of some grand openings uh, of service and programs in the future. Uh, thank you, Brian. Thank you, Jerry, uh, Scott, and Senator Jeff Smith. Thank you very much. There has been a battle over the last few years in the legislature and we're presenting a Legislator of the Year Award. We had intended to do this some time ago uh, and the schedules in COVID just didn't uh, have it work out. Uh, Senator Chris Larson has introduced legislation uh, that puts some equity in the rules governing TNC companies and Wisconsin licensed DOT companies um, and it was an incredible battle. Uh, Senator Larson uh, is um, very active in the legislature in the 7th Senate District. And I have invited uh, somebody many of you don't know, but I'm going to ask him to say a few words. Um, Jonathan Brostoff is a state representative from uh, the city of Milwaukee. Uh, he is um, an amazing public servant. He is out there. He is very, very active. There are people that agree with him. And right, Jonathan, there are people that don't agree with you, but that's what the game is all about. Services. So I'm proud to introduce you to these five groups. Jonathan is going to say a few words about Chris. He knows him quite well. And then uh, we'll, uh, I'll help present the award to, uh, to Chris. Welcome, Jonathan. Welcome. Thanks, Gary, and thanks for everyone for being here. I'm having a little bit of uh, issues with the Zoom. We're living in such a strange 
world right now. So I uh, appreciate uh, y'all. And you're going to have to look at my kind of form picture instead of my beautiful face uh, up, up and left. So um, I really appreciate, uh, you know, this recognition for Senator Larson, as well as all the work um, all of you do and, and what everyone represents here. Uh, there's a lot of talent. And especially during times like these, you realize how important it is to be able to connect people. And um, this is, you know, <laughs> prevalent during a, a COVID situation. So thank you very much. And yeah, I, I'll be brief, but I've known Senator Larson for quite some time. Uh, he's been a very good friend, but also uh, uh, my boss at one point and a coworker and colleague for many years. And, you know, even way back when Chris was a county supervisor in Milwaukee, uh, you know, that's when we first kind of started digging into these issues when we started realizing how, you uh, you know, in a lot of ways, uh, taxi drivers are kind of getting screwed and being put under really unfair work conditions and kind of having systems that weren't particularly fair to them. And uh, even back when he was a county supervisor, although it's not usually the thing you would associate with a county supervisor at that time, he took leadership on it and really fought for equity and um, has and has always been a big advocate of multimodal transportation in general. But he really made sure to fight for the taxi drivers in Milwaukee. And then that passion for justice and equity kind of continued uh, when he became a state senator. And he uh, not only has a really a good heart when it comes to this sort of legislation, but a really keen eye for identifying uh, pieces that can be improved upon as well as things a lot of other people aren't paying attention to. And that's really important, especially um, with the TNC bill that kind of came in very quickly and was kind of like a force of nature across the country. And a lot of people um, were, were missing some key aspects of, and he really put his nose to the grindstone, did some things that weren't necessarily popular, but were certainly the correct thing to do, the right thing to do. And, uh, you know, I think it's good to recognize him for that, doing well while you're doing good and doing good while you're doing well. So, um, yeah, I, I can think of no one who, you know, in Wisconsin who deserves an honor like this more than Senator Larson. I think it's great to uh, bring that to attention, Gary. So thank you. And and um, yeah, with no further ado, uh, thank you very much, Senator Larson, and congratulations. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, I should have I should have guessed that you were up to something. Um, uh, thank you, <laughs> Gary. Uh, of course, Jonathan and I, uh, in addition to, to him uh, having having worked for me and now being a colleague, we're also good friends, and we still we can talk. I, I say we talk probably every other day, if if not if not more than that. So literally, we were on the phone, and he was kind of hinting like that he had to go to something, and he said, "Don't you have something you have to get to?" And I was like, "What is he? What is what is Jonathan going to be on?" Um, and it wasn't the scout meeting that I've got with my son after this. So it was, it, I, I should have guessed that this was, that he had had part of this. So thank you, Gary, for setting that up. It was a wonderful surprise. Thank you for the kind words, uh, Jonathan. I appreciate that. Um, and thank you for the work that you do representing the 19th Assembly District. Um, definitely, definitely giving me uh, 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 some hustle of trying to, to, to keep up with all the good work that he does. Um, but yeah, thank you to the, uh, uh, to the group in uh in providing this this award um i've got it on my phone too i see that you've got it presented too so you know usually have like the picture where you where you hold it up in the air so you can have the the freeze frame um of, of me holding the award so thank you <laughs> for that uh appreciate this and um uh, appreciate the the recognition of 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 picking this up and trying to run with it still dedicated to our our taxi cab community um, of trying to do what we can to make sure that they are they are treated with respect and making sure that our laws reflect that. Uh, and you're seeing the the what happens when transportation is um, um, I guess politicized in a way that uh, uh, what's happened with Uber and what's happening with Lyft and what's happening in other parts of the country where they are cracking down and trying to say that there does need to be um, some equity in how um, uh, the industry is regulated. Um, so that's something we're committed to. Uh, I'm committed to. I know you guys are committed to. And of course, and what we're trying to do in, in promoting um, uh, equitable public transportation across our, our wonderful state. So thanks for the work that you guys are doing. I uh, wish we had something in person. I, I apologize for the delay in, uh, in, in how, how things had, had to, to, to happen. But hopefully once we 
are able to meet safely in public, uh, and we will we'll be able to talk again in person um, and continue the good work um, at the Capitol when there is a uh, uh, an in-person legislative day. Uh, be happy to host you again at our at our office as uh, as I have in the past. So thank you guys. This particular battle was noted by all in the transportation world because the regulation that Uber and Lyft, uh, not mostly Uber, sought was to be not part of the DOT, to remove itself completely from the background checks that the state patrol provides. And so it was given to an agency that has nothing to do with transportation. That lack of coordination, regardless of what you think of the policy, that lack of coordination upsets the whole system and creates very unfair playing fields. So Senator Larson's legislation, which we enthusiastically supported, it basically says that if a local municipality has an ordinance, then everybody has to follow that ordinance, whether you're a TNC or United American or Green Cab or Jones Cab Service, you will follow that. So thank you. Working with your staff has been an honor. I know that Jonathan causes you grief a lot of the times, but you have to you're responsible for him in many ways. So it's, you guys are a great team. And, and as uh, Craig Thompson knows, uh, the secretary, not every Senate and assembly member in their districts get along as well as the two of you do. So that's a very good thought. So our best, uh, we are recognizing uh, a colleague, uh, a friend, uh, a person um, of enormous uh, talent, uh, and there, just so you're aware, uh, there is, and Carl, Carl, you say it best, just say it the way you described it to me about every driver being eligible for a vaccine starting now. And Janet Sander is the person that really helped make that happen. And it's, it's very significant. Well, you just said it, Gary, but, but there is no, the counties are kind of in charge, the state's kind of in charge, but Janet created a possibility now for every driver who's who's engaged in public transportation to get on that county's list and to get it vaccinated. Right. So thank you, Gary. And Bob is on the line. Bob, before Janet takes, would you like to say something about her? You're the the boss. <laughs> Sure, Gary. Um, thank you very much. And uh, thank you for, um, to your association of associations for this, for this award. It's, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's an honor always to be recognized um, for our work. You know, I've been in this business called aging for uh, just over 40 years. And um, almost every year when I talk to older persons about what their needs and concerns are, their first ones are their health. The second one is the cost of their health care. And the third one, which is really not even a number three, it's somewhere in the one and two area, is transportation. Despite the, or because of the, the uh, COVID, the pandemic, we're, we're seeing live what that means. Um, we're seeing all kinds of ideas coming out, how to get older persons to uh, their vaccination. These are the persons who are dying from the pandemic. So your industry is very, very important to older persons in Wisconsin and older persons make up a, 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 a large percentage of the population. So I've known Janet for many years um, and um, have seen her um, in different um, jobs. She was the director of the ADRC in Portage County, a top tier ADRC that had a transportation program that she oversaw. And um, I was able to uh, welcome her into the GWAR, that's the name of our agency, uh, family in 2013. And I have seen her grow in this job of public policy and advocacy that she is the one and only person in our organization who handles that. Um, and it, it, she has really brought that alive to not only our organization, but the, all of the aging programs in the state and um, um, to, to 
to the state legislature. It's, it's, it strikes me every once in a while that there aren't, aren't too many, there aren't very many um, organizations that walk the halls um, and uh, advocate for older persons in particular. But she has really done a great partnership with AARP and the two together um, are, are well, well recognized. So I just want to say thank you. And um, uh, Janet has earned this um, award because she works very hard. And I can tell you why, because I see her time card. And <laughs> you wouldn't believe the number of hours that she puts in beyond the standard 80 hours in a two week uh, pay period. Um, she works tirelessly. She's a very smart and very keen person and perfect for the job. And thank you again for the award. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bob. And your service is appreciated. We think the world of Guar and uh, people that have worked, you've assembled a good crew. And, and to Janet, thank you. I'm gonna turn the microphone or the podium over to you. Um, and I, I want you to describe just briefly the, the day and the half that you spent on the vaccine where you brought up the public transportation workers and how that debate finally turned. You were a hero there. And um, I did get a call from a major hospital uh, person who uh, is active in the Wisconsin Hospital Association. And basically the, it just dawned on them that this really made a lot of sense. So thank you, Janet, on behalf of all of us, thank you. And I turn it over to you for a couple of words here. Thank you, Gary, and thank all of you. As, as many of you know, um, Transportation was brought up multiple times throughout the discussions on the vaccination distribution, um, once in the healthcare provider arena, and again, um, as we looked at who the essential workers are in our communities. And it's really interesting to help people see that all of the wonderful services in the world aren't helpful if they don't reach the people who are most in need. And so we had numerous discussions about how critical it would be for people to get to testing sites and vaccination sites and all things COVID um, without transportation, things are gonna stand still for a whole lot of people who have already been um, disenfranchised by our, our healthcare system sometimes. So uh, a lot of discussion happened behind the scenes. There was a lot that happened in our public meetings and there was certainly a lot that happened after the really robust round of public input that was received uh, based on some of our documents. And I thank the transportation community for backing my comments up. It's really important that they hear from the folks who are the stakeholders in all of this on, how, on just how important this is. And so it was clear that I wasn't standing there alone, but I was standing there with all of you. I'm really honored to receive this award from people I consider my friends and my partners in the transportation community who I know are among the real heroes of this pandemic. While many businesses and organizations were shutting down, um, Nick and I were talking to many of you, Nick, our transportation specialist at Guar, um, about how you were rising to the challenge. I know that you were busy figuring out how to navigate and operate in this new world so that those who depended on you could get where they needed to go. Most importantly to me, just like as what happens in the aging network, when you came up with a workable solution or idea, you didn't keep it close to your vest and, and you know, for proprietary reasons, but you shared your best practices and ideas with others so that they too could help their community members get to jobs and access essential resources in their community. In the aging network, we often talk about our nutrition program as being more than a meal. They offer human, important human connections, resources, safety checks, and so much more. I can tell you when I was first introduced to the world of transportation about three decades ago, I was scared as hell to see the words trans fleet management and transportation services in my job description. <laughs> what I quickly learned is that, and have continued to deepen my understanding of, is that just like nutrition, transportation is way more than just a ride. 
your services to and your relationship with your passengers, some of whom may be experiencing their best and their worst days, is what makes it possible for non-drivers in this state to remain connected to their communities. We have all learned so much from this past year about what it means to be isolated and to feel lonely. For many, those were not new lessons, but lifetime experiences. Your services are so critically important to the independence and dignity of so many. And so from the bottom of my heart, I thank you for this advocacy award and for all that each of you does every day in your communities. Thank you so much. Thank you, Janet. Thank you. We appreciate you very much. Thank you. Made me cry. That was good. Uh, next, uh, we have um, a, an award to uh, South, uh, Southwest CAP uh, and the uh, for Outstanding Champions of Transportation Services in Rural Communities. Uh, Southwest CAP, uh, uh, Wally is here. Uh, I'd like uh, Wally to introduce himself and uh, let, he can explain to you uh, the various programs that they operate. He is an expert on this. Uh, the, the program work that Southwest CAP has done is just extraordinary and it's historic in what it does in order to connect people to their health care, to their uh, nutrition, to their work, to their skills development training, uh, to educational opportunities. And uh, uh, Wally served as the, the most recent past president of WISCAP, which is the agency of the 16 uh, poverty agencies around the state. And he has been director in Southwest CAP for a number of years. Some of his staff is on on the call with us. <clears throat> and this is a uh, long-term, Senator Markline is gonna join us, but he is not yet on the call. Uh, so I'm just gonna proceed here uh, with this and uh, let Wally say a few words. So this is uh, recognizing the work that the agency has done in expanding rural transportation services and programs throughout the five county area that you serve, which has no transit systems in it whatsoever. So, uh, Wally, welcome, welcome, welcome. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, it's, it's great to be here. So we're an anti-poverty agency and we work in five southwestern Wisconsin counties, uh, those that border on the Mississippi on the west and then um, uh, the Illinois border on the south, so just southwest of Madison. Uh, it's primarily a, a rural area. Uh, and as I think many of you know, uh, rural areas have some unique challenges. Uh, certainly transportation is one of them. Um, so, uh, you know, to, to be able to help people who are experiencing poverty in a variety of different ways, I think transportation touches on everything. Uh, because if people can't get to work or they can't get to services or whatever it happens to be, uh, they're not going to really be able to move things along in their lives and to become economically self-sufficient. A lot of people don't realize that every three years we do a community needs assessment uh, to determine um, what new programs and services we need. You know, we have our usual programs. We have Head Start and food pantries and housing and, you know, all that type of thing for people in poverty. Uh, going way back when, uh, shortly, shortly when I've, I started at Southwest Cap almost 20 years ago, uh, one, of the, the, one of the top five was lack of transportation. The inability of uh, clients like ours who are at the lower end of the economic spectrum to be able to get to work, to be able to get to shopping, uh, to be able to get medical visits, you know, et cetera, et cetera, a whole range of things. So it's really um, having a, a very negative impact uh, on, on the folks that we serve. Um, and so shortly thereafter, uh, you know, I, I got to know Jeff Segabrett, who's luckily on the call. Uh, hi, Jeff. Uh, and Jeff, uh, Je it was Jeff's brainchild actually to come up with the Work and Wheels program, uh, which is uh, a program that provides uh, a loan, a low cost, no interest loan uh, to uh, low income people, but who have jobs uh, so that they can get back and forth to work or hopefully work more hours or maybe even find a better paying job. And that project's been overwhelmingly successful ever since then. It's spread to multiple counties beyond ours. Uh, and I really do have to give credit to Jeff, his initiative, his thinking, his brains, and certainly his personality, which kind of gives it a, a certain flavor. <laughs> if any of you have known Jeff, you'll, you'll, you'll know what I mean by that. Um, he's, he's, he's kind of unique. 
but uh, he's unique in a, in, a good, in a good sort of way. So it's been very helpful. So with that program, you know, we have seen um, that household income, family income has increased by thousands and thousands of dollars, uh, just simply because we offered a, a loan that was uh, doable uh, for, for folks who are struggling. Uh, and so I don't just see it as a transportation project. I also see it as a family development project to be able to move people along. So uh, again, I'm, I'm, I'm representing Southwest Cap here, but I, I want to give credit for, for that project and more uh, to, to Jeff. Uh, following that, um, a number of years ago, we started our LIFT program. That's capital I-L-I-F-T. Actually, we had that name first before some others tried to steal it. I guess they didn't steal it from us. They spelled it differently, but uh, you no, know, ours is much better, of course. Uh, and so, you know, the LIFT program and um, right now is being managed by Lori Jacobson, uh, who's on the, on the call too, although I can't see her. She's still kind of hiding. Uh, there she is. Hi, Lori. Uh, and uh, our lift program is a public transportation program. Uh, we use private drivers, we use private vehicles, we use vans. Uh, we have some specialty vans now for, for people who have special needs uh, and uh, recently paid drivers. Uh, and that's gonna have been an uh, uh, incredibly successful project as well. It's one of the fir first few programs of a rural transportation uh, nature that actually can make it financially. That doesn't mean we don't get grant support, but the program itself does exceedingly well. Uh, it's in all five of our counties. Uh, and a, a good portion of the uh, trips are for medical purposes. Uh, kidney, di kidney dialysis is one of them, not the only one. Uh, but then other things like shopping. Um, so I think we're doing some programming for people who are going to work. Uh, to schools, it's you know a, a call in you know is a call in project. There's no uh, set route, uh, but it's very very successful. And sometimes I sit in my office and I watch these lift vans go zipping back and forth, uh, and that's wonderful. And uh, recently, with the with the pandemic, um, we've also been able to rise to the occasion uh, by using um, uh, techniques to clean the vans, by being very careful about who we, who we, uh, who we, uh, take on trips. Uh, and also more recently, I think all of our Lyft drivers have been vaccinated. They've gotten their second vac vaccine. Uh, so that doesn't mean that everything is perfect, but it does mean that the risk is much lower. Uh, and so that's been incredibly successful too, in terms of being able to help so many people in so many different ways. So on, on behalf of Southwest CAP, I want, I want to thank you for this award. Uh, I don't know if Laurie and, and Jeff want to say anything. They're usually not that quiet. Uh, but they seem to be quiet right now. I, I, don't, I, I couldn't put them in the shy category. Uh, so I don't know if Laurie or Jeff, did you want to say anything? Because this is, this is your doing, not mine. Um, I don't know. You've said it pretty good, Wally. I mean, we've, we're, we, we like our little spot down here, and we usually try and kind of fly under the radar. But the last few years, we, people have noticed what we're doing a little bit more. So, Yeah, yeah. Laurie, you want to say anything? Yeah, the only thing I want to say is that um, we need to remember the real people that are doing this work, and that's our volunteers and our staff. And without them, this would not be happening. So uh, big kudos to them. We have very dedicated and uh, um, um, committed, dedicated and uh, people that are really passionate about doing this. So it's pretty good. Okay. Doing that many rides with that few people. So. Uh, thank right. you. Thank you very much. And that okay. program connects people to work. And uh, it is done very creatively. And as Jeff pointed out, Wally pointed out, the program has spread to other areas of the state. So thank you. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate it. Just a good recognition. Like I said, we'll be in touch with the local press uh, about announcing the award uh, for you as well. So thank you. Mr. Secretary, um, thank you uh, for being on the call and for uh, being with us today. This means an awful lot. Uh, Craig Thompson uh, is, uh, is one of the, the best appointments that Governor Evers has made. He came through and, uh, and, and worked in transportation, probably the most qualified person to get the job and has brought every bit of energy that he has, which is substantial, to the position. 
And I am so honored that he could spend a few minutes, maybe a few more than you needed, but uh, we appreciate that. We wanted to end the program to really highlight what occurred. And um, some of your staff were on with us earlier and we so appreciate that. At the very start of the pandemic, we contacted the department and we came up with a list of 37 people from all of the folks that the 30 people that are on the call now, plus others who were beside themselves trying to figure out what this pandemic was all about and how these programs were connected, how the federal dollars were. So we are uh, presenting an outstanding public service award to the Wisconsin Department of Transportation, to its staff and its leadership um, for your interest. You didn't have to do this in reducing the spread of COVID-19. We believe that you helped save lives in Wisconsin. We really believe that. Uh, the best practices that were mentioned uh, were part of this. And I want to introduce Carl Schulte, who has written a short statement that expresses from all of us, Craig, where we are. And I'm glad Diana was able to stay on the call. And by the way, she has been with us for almost the whole day, just so you're aware. Um, uh, Carl was the uh, volunteer chair of this task force. Uh, we had four telephone conversations with your department. We, your department brought in the FTA. They dragged them into these conversations and they gave us website information, best practices. And anyway, Carl, I will turn it over to you. Carl served as uh, the chair of this. Carl is vice president of Green Cab in Madison and Janesville and is the president of the Wisconsin Coordinated Transportation Cooperative. Uh, so I'll turn it over to him. Thank you, Gary. I only have a couple of words, but hopefully then the secretary will have a couple of words for us. But it's an honor to present this award to our friends and colleagues at Wisconsin DOT. And thank you, Secretary Thompson, for being here today to accept our token of gratitude. This award recognizes the leadership shown by your department very early on as the emergency was just taking form staff from the transit section reached out to us with clear communications. These same workers helped us create an industry task force so that we could share best practices with ourselves and so that DOT staff could listen in and share communications with us. Your staff carefully listened to our experiences as a pandemic developed and adjusted practices as needed. The leadership of the DOT helped limit the spread of COVID-19. Thank you, Mr. Secretary, for being with us here today and for the leadership your department continues to offer during this ongoing pandemic. Your actions have saved lives. And please pay, pass along our heartfelt gratitude to your workers who are always there to help us in our efforts. Thank you. Well, thank you, Carl. I, I appreciate that very much. G Gary, I appreciate the kind words. And, and Carl, I, I will um, certainly pass this on to the people that actually did it. So um, I, I know they will appreciate it very much. I, I, cannot, take, uh, I cannot take credit for, for their work, but I, I'm thrilled that this, this is the way they did it. And I know Ian was on earlier uh, today to provide updates, but you know that's within his section. And I believe a run uh, provided some as well. So um, I will make Make sure that they see this, uh, and I know it will it will make their day to know how much it, it meant to the to the the people that they helped uh, work and set this up for. Um, just briefly, um, well, I kind of it's just been great to be on this call and look around and see uh, a lot of a lot of friends that I've that I've known over the years. So uh, Gary, appreciate that. I know you pointed out I think that Diana has been on the call uh, almost the, this entire meeting. So Diana Moss, our legislative. Uh, liaison extraordinaire. Uh, she really is the best in the business. So if you need anything uh, from the DOT, please know that you can always uh, reach out to her. And I, and I just wanted to say a couple things of, of the different areas. I know Scott Rogers was talking about, uh, as well as several people, about the, the TCMC, the Twin Cities to Milwaukee to Chicago. And, um, you know, we're really excited. I think Arun, uh, I'm understanding, talked about this a little bit earlier today. And when he brought this to our office and we were looking at applying for the for the federal grants. Um, uh, talked with Commissioner Callahan, Margaret Callahan over in Minnesota. She's been a, a great partner um, over there. And so we were just thrilled that we were able to be successful in getting that. 
Um, I'm hopeful that the legislature in Minnesota will do the next part that they need to to do this. But uh, getting that next line running on there and making those improvements to do that, I think, is going to be significant. Um, we've also made some pretty good headway and gotten more grants, and that's a runs shop as well um, down in the southeast part um, to make some improvements. And we're hoping to go from seven to ten round trips a day on the Hiawatha. There's some problem south of our border on that that we're working with Canadian Pacific on, but we're we're confident we'll get there uh, with some of the Muskego Yards improvements and, and get from seven to 10 round trips a day down there. So um, we've really been thrilled that we've been successful and able to get some of these grants from the federal government on for some passenger rail projects. And I think, I think there's a, um, a lot more possibilities and things coming up. Um, and then I just did want to mention as well that, and I know Janet Zander is very familiar, we formed um, non-driver advisory committee um, uh, over this last year. And it's being co-chaired by Denise Jess with the Council on the Blind and Tammy Jackson with the Wisconsin Board for uh, People with Disabilities. And they've been doing tremendous work uh, on behalf of the 1.2 million people in Wisconsin that, that don't drive. So um, I, I'm hoping most of you are familiar with that committee, but if not, um, they've really been providing um, a great deal of input to us and I think a lot more uh, good work is going to come out on their behalf. And then just finally, um, Gary, I think you had mentioned, um, I think Governor Evers put forward some really strong uh, um, elements in this budget for transit and for non-drivers. I think um, if we thought that there was a chance, there probably would have been even more aggressive things put in there, uh, but we're trying to, to work with things we think could be achievable. So uh, there's $10 million for um, bus capital for our systems to be able to replace their buses. Uh, to, re to return to re uh, complete streets legislation um, that we used to have in Wisconsin uh, to allow uh, local governments uh, the power of eminent domain to, for bike paths, um, to provide increases for our mass transit operating aids of two and a half percent each year. And again, I think you know we would have liked to even been more aggressive on that. But um, so we're hoping uh, all of those issues I just mentioned are going to be a struggle, I think, to keep in there. So. Um, I guess I would just ask for all of your help to make sure that you contact uh, your, your legislators and know why some of those things uh, and, and even more would, would be important. So again, we really appreciate this award. Um, I, I will make sure the people that were responsible for making this happen get it and, and, and receive it. And I know they will appreciate it very much. So I don't want to take any more of everybody's time, but other than just to say thank you. Your, your service is really appreciated and we know uh, we know it's a difficult uh, balance, and this is really good. This is this budget. The governor's office informed us, brought us into discussions. Uh, we know our work, uh, what we have to do in the months ahead, and we will be there to present our point of view and to be a positive force. We will we will work with you and uh, really be part of any kind of coordination and messaging uh, to the legislature. We already talked about. Um, going to office hours that legislators are setting up. Uh, Howard Markline mentioned to me that he's doing 10 of his own budget sessions within the 17th district. He and his three representatives are just going to have constituents. Well, we're going to be there. We're going to be talking to them. And uh, just to say uh, our appreciation and our thank you from all five organizations, uh, we appreciate your service and we will be there in the months ahead and we will be talking to the governor's office and let them know how much this really meant to all of us today. So uh, thank you, uh, good luck, win on all your issues, okay? <laughs> thank you, Craig, thank See you. you. Yeah. I think that that, uh, everybody, thank you, Corey, thank you, Paul, thank you, everybody. That concludes our legislative day. The secretary did mention a couple other programs, Complete Streets, Eminent Domain. Those are partners with us as well on some of these things. And I uh, just wanna say um, so much appreciation to the inspiration that Southwest CAP gives us all about working together and being creative. Janet, thank you. Uh, Senator Larson is off to Boy Scouts. He wants his son to be an Eagle Scout someday. Scott Rogers, thank you, everybody. Uh, and are there any questions or any points you want to make? Mark, are we ready to adjourn? I would like to thank Mark for all his hard yes. work. Yes. Yes. Oh, thank you. Yes. Uh, same uh, for Gary for um, 
I know it's a huge job to line up all of these uh, celebrities to come see us. And so thank you very much, Gary. Yeah, I described it as being an air traffic controller at O'Hare Airport on a Friday night. Uh, and, and, and people are in a rough mood to begin with, right? But thank you. I'm very proud of everything that was done today. We have to bring it to them. And, and they uh, are really willing to listen. Just, just remember what Dave Considine said about just think of his background, his transformation from Goldwater Republican to where he is today. Uh, these people bring different things and it's important that you know them because it helps then for those of you in the management or leadership of organizations to understand how better to approach the, the whole world. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Talk to you soon. Take care. Thanks. Thank you.